Hey everyone, thank you for joining me today. I have a new best and worst, and today it's a little different. I'm going to talk about some newer, higher end foundations. A lot of times on my channel, I focus on drugstore because it's affordable, it's accessible, and to be honest, I use a lot of drugstore, but there were a lot of recent launches lately with foundations, especially on the higher end, and some really exciting ones that I was curious about trying, and I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that probably are curious as well. So I took the last about month and a half to test out six new foundations, and I thought I would share my thoughts on them, how they perform, how they hold up to their claims, and how they compare to each other. So before I start, if you're new to my channel, I should tell you that I have combination skin. I do get oily in my T-zone, especially my nose and forehead, and then my cheeks for the most part are pretty normal. So for this video, I tested each of these foundations on four different occasions for about 10 hours of wear each time. I applied each of them with a flat top foundation brush as well as testing them out on a separate day with a beauty blender type sponge just to see how they applied and how the mode of application affected their wear throughout the day because I do notice a difference sometimes. So jumping into how I do these videos, I usually start off with my least favorite and work my way to the best in my opinion. And having said that, I can't say that there's any foundation that I hated in terms of the group of six that I'm gonna talk about, but there are definitely some that are way better in my opinion and others where I would not repurchase them. The first one that I wasn't overly impressed with is the Stick Foundation from Anastasia Beverly Hills. The big claims on this one are that it is a medium to full coverage, buildable foundation. It's supposed to give you a natural matte finish and it's supposed to be best for normal to combination skin. It retails for $25 and it comes with, I believe, 0.32 ounces. And as a reference, most of the liquid foundations come in at about one ounce. That's a standard size. But I do find with most stick foundations, that you are gonna get a lot less than that one ounce because it's a more concentrated formula. Having said that, I think it's a good value for a stick foundation and it does come in a ton of shades. I have to say that one of the best strengths to this line is the shade selection. I have mine in the shade Warm Natural, which is actually a really good match to my skin. Now, for me, First off, one of the things I didn't like about this foundation is that I found it to be really dry in consistency. So when I go to swatch it, I have to apply a little bit more pressure to get the foundation to transfer to the skin. And then when I come in to blend it, I found that it blended a lot better with a flat foundation brush and kind of a firm pressure to really get it to move around on the skin. The Beauty Blender, I felt like I had to really work harder to blend it out because it is such a firm foundation. It doesn't blend super easily. Because of that, I will say that I think this foundation is definitely not gonna be great for people with dry skin or any sort of texture issue to your skin. If you have a lot of texture, I find that this does cling to those areas. It will accentuate them. It doesn't lay nicely over them. And because of its uh, drier matte finish, it is also going to magnify dryness. For me, because I have combination skin, once it was blended out, it actually lay nicely on my skin and I found that it wore nicer throughout the day as it melded with my natural oils. So I can't complain in that regard, but um, in terms of the coverage, another kind of drawback with this foundation, I don't think it's a full coverage by any means. I think it starts out as a light coverage and you can build it up to about a medium coverage, but I wouldn't call this full. Um, you can try to layer it. I think if you go three plus layers, you can probably get it to a full coverage, but it starts to look really cakey on the skin and settle into uh, the fine lines, my smile lines, any fine lines you might have on your forehead. So I find less is more with this. And as a result, I think that this is probably best for people with normal to oily skin who don't have a lot of imperfections. This next foundation on my list was one that I was definitely bummed out that it wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be because when I heard they were coming out with this, I was super excited. 
It's from Urban Decay and it's the All Nighter Foundation. It has beautiful packaging and it does come with a really nice pump. It does come with the traditional one ounce and it retails for $40. The big claims on this one is that it's going to give you full coverage, a natural matte finish, and obviously long wearing because the All Nighter line from Urban Decay is supposed to be the long wearing or prolonging of your makeup. In terms of addressing all those claims, I'll start off by saying it is a medium to full coverage. You can wear it as a medium if you apply it with a beauty blender and just don't go overboard, but you can definitely get a full coverage out of this, especially with a flat foundation brush. Um, in terms of it being a matte finish, I have to agree. This is one of those where it's a true matte finish. It's not completely flat, but um, there isn't any sort of glow or radiance to it. I don't think it lives up to the claim of being long wearing. It's not terrible, but I don't think it's anything special or above average in terms of wear. For me, on my combination skin, I found that at around three hours of wear, I needed to come in and touch off a little bit of oil in the T-zone. What I also found with this one is that it oxidizes and it doesn't just oxidize a little bit. I would actually say this one deepens about half a shade to a full shade darker than what it starts off of. And I got mine in the shade 4.0, which when I first swatched it looked a little bit too light. I would describe it when it first comes out of the tube as a light with a yellow undertone, um, but it oxidizes and I'm wearing it right now to be a really good match to my current skin tone, which I would say is about a medium. So I think that that's a big difference and I think that that is going to create a lot of issues for people. Something I actually do love about this one is for the amount of coverage you're getting with this foundation, it does feel very light on the skin. I don't feel like I'm wearing a ton of makeup, but because of its uh, true matte finish, I do find that it will settle into my smile lines and even some of my fine lines. So um, it can be a little bit aging. I wouldn't recommend it for dry skin even though um, it doesn't do the best job at oil control. It also isn't the most flattering initially, I think, on dry skin. This next foundation I actually think is a pretty good one. It's not at the top of my list because it does have a couple of flaws to it in my opinion, but uh, overall I think it's a really nice one. It's from Hourglass and it's the Vanish Seamless Finish Foundation Stick. They always have really long names. I got mine in the shade Warm Ivory and it comes with 0.25 ounces and retails for around 46 bucks. So it's a little bit pricey, but it does have really beautiful packaging. Again, very convenient because it's in stick form. And it does something a little bit different than the traditional stick foundations. It has a triangle tip. Now in terms of the big claims on this one, it says that it's long wearing with the coverage of a concealer, the fluidity of a foundation and the weightlessness of a powder. In terms of coverage, I would call this a medium to buildable coverage. So you can get it up to a full coverage for sure. Uh, with one application, I find it to be a solid medium coverage. And if you build it up, the thing that I notice with it is that it can start to look a little bit heavy and cakey on the skin and it's more prone to settle into your fine lines or your smile lines. But with one layer of this, a solid medium coverage, it actually looks beautiful on the skin. And I would say that it really does hold up to its claims in terms of it blending super easily. It really does blend like a liquid almost. And in terms of it feeling weightless, that would be the one area I would say it depends on how much you apply. If you're doing one layer, then I do think it's fairly weightless. The finish on this, I actually would say it's more of a satin finish. For me, in my T-zone, I found that this really got quite shiny at about the three hour mark. Um, I would say the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation was less shiny on my skin type than this one. In the areas where I was more oily, I do find that the foundation fades a little bit more easily than some other foundations I've used. Uh, I would notice more redness around my nose as the day wore on because the foundation was breaking apart. In the areas where my skin is normal, the foundation held beautifully throughout the day. So we're at the midway point. We're down to the last three foundations. And I would have to say that these three are pretty equally ranked in my opinion. It just depends on your skin type and what kind of finish you want but I think that they're all really solid foundations. And this first one is from Lancome. It's the Taint Idol Ultra Cushion Foundation. 
They now have added, I think, three different foundations to the Taint Adult Ultra line. And I have been a long time user of the original that is the liquid, comes in a bottle with a pump. And each time they come out with a new version of it, I'm right there ready to try it because I really like the original. This one, I would say in terms of its wear, which is really the selling point of this line, again, does a great job. I have mine in the shade 280 Bisque, and it's a warm shade. And so this is the compact. You actually get the cushion in this individual package. So it, it comes like this, and then you click it into place in the compact. And that's really nice because you can buy the refills without having to buy an entire new package. The compact is very pretty sleek, and you get um, the traditional uh, sponge puff to apply the cushion foundation. The way that most of these cushion foundations are marketed to be applied is to take your puff and actually dip it into the compact and then press it into the skin. It's supposed to be oil-free, a full coverage, long wearing foundation with a natural matte finish. Um, in terms of how it holds up to those claims, I would agree that it is a solid medium to full coverage. You can build it to a full and it is definitely long wearing in my opinion. But the finish is where I disagree and it's kind of odd because they're claiming a matte finish and I think that this does a 180 from that. I think this gives you a beautiful radiant finish. Even as it sets, I think it still looks like a satin to radiant finish. And so for people who have dry skin and want a fuller coverage, long wearing foundation, this is a really great choice. It actually reminds me a lot of the L'Oreal Cushion Foundation, which makes a lot of sense because they are owned by the same umbrella company. But this one has, in my opinion, a lot better coverage and is a lot longer wearing. On combination to oily skin like mine, I found that I was definitely shiny around the three hour mark again. That's pretty much the standard time for me with a lot of foundations where I get shiny and I definitely was with this one. But the really neat thing about this foundation is even though I was shiny, I could blot it off and it did not affect the coverage it didn't get patchy, it didn't fade on me. It really stays on the skin very well. And I could get 10 plus hours and the coverage looked just as good at the end of the day as it did at the start. And all the other makeup I applied over it, like blush and bronzer and contour, still held in place. The big drawback with this, because there has to be one, is the price point. I believe this one was the most expensive of all the foundations I tried. It retails for $47 and you are getting 0.45 ounces. And in terms of cushion foundations, I do kind of hold them to the same standard as a liquid foundation in terms of how much I'm getting for the amount I'm paying because it is still a liquidy type foundation condensed into this compact. So for me, 47 bucks for less than half an ounce is definitely expensive. The next foundation I have to talk about is from Makeup Forever and it's I think a reformulation for them. I don't think this is an entirely brand new concept. It's called their Water Blend Foundation and it comes with really beautiful packaging. It's got this kind of matte finish glass jar with a really nice pump. It retails for $43 and you are getting the standard one fluid ounce. It says it's a lightweight water gel formula that gives you sheer to buildable uh, coverage and it's going to give you a dewy, flawless, natural finish. I would have to agree with pretty much all those claims. It definitely is a very liquidy, watery formula as you can see from the demo. It has a very cooling effect on the skin. When you first apply it, it feels like you're putting cold water on your face, which is refreshing. And in terms of its coverage, it definitely starts sheer. Now it's buildable and that's what it claims to be. With uh, two to three layers, you can get a medium coverage. It has a gorgeous finish. It looks like healthy, radiant skin. It's not overly shiny and it's not at all matte. Um, the nice thing too is that water gel formula really wears beautifully throughout the day. Even on my combination skin, I felt like it held up in the T-zone. I actually went about five hours before feeling like I was a little bit shiny, which 
is excellent considering that you're getting a more radiant finish with this. I would recommend this for pretty much anybody as long as you're not looking for a full coverage foundation and you're willing to apply additional layers if you need more coverage. I could see this being something that a lot of people like because maybe there are days where your skin's really good and you just need a little bit of evening so you apply one layer, you got a nice sheer coverage. And then maybe there's another day where you have some breakouts and you need more coverage. This allows you to build up to it. They have an excellent shade selection. I really think that they cover a good spectrum. I did not find that this oxidized. I use the shade Y305. My favorite way to apply this foundation, by the way, is using a flat top foundation brush just to get the most coverage out of it. It's so liquidy and it blends really easily that a beauty blender, in my opinion, isn't necessary and it's definitely gonna soak up a lot of it and take away coverage. So we're down to the last foundation and I have to say for me personally, this is probably my favorite of the bunch right now and it's uh, from Clinique. It's the Super Balance Silk Makeup with SPF 15. Now they already have a Super Balanced makeup in the line that looks almost identical in terms of packaging, but I believe it doesn't have SPF and it doesn't say silk in it. So this is a new addition. Um, the claims on this one is sheer to medium coverage that's going to control oil in the areas that you need it to and add hydration to the areas where you need that. So it's really targeted for combination skin, but I think that this foundation would work for a variety of skin types. I think it's a really beautiful one. The other really nice thing about this one is it retails for $25 for one fluid ounce. So in terms of all the foundations I've spoken about today, this is the best value. And for a higher end foundation, um, this really isn't a bad price, $25. One thing right off the bat that you probably notice is it does not come with a pump and that would be my biggest uh, critique with Clinique foundations. A lot of them don't offer a pump and um, this to me is really old school and not very user friendly. Uh, the foundation has a liquidy, slightly thick formula so you do have to kind of shake it to pour it out. In terms of shade selection, I think Clinique always does a pretty good job with giving you a wide variety of shades and I think that they do have a nice shade selection. I'm using it in the shade Silk Sahara which is 07 and it's a medium fair according to Clinique with a golden undertone. Now, if you're not familiar with Clinique foundations, I definitely recommend going to the counter and um, having them color match you or playing around with some of the foundations just to get an idea because they have a slightly different labeling system. So I would call this a medium to buildable coverage. You do get a nice medium coverage off of one layer and you can definitely build it up. The finish to this is like a soft focus, soft matte finish. It's not flat by any means compared to the Urban Decay All Nighter that I spoke about earlier. This is a much more forgiving matte and it looks really kind of airbrushed on the skin. How this wore for me throughout the day, uh, it definitely lasted 10 plus hours. I didn't find that I was fading anywhere or breaking up. Um, the control of my oil lasted for about five hours and then I needed to touch up a little bit with some powder or blotting paper, but that is still better than a lot of the other foundations. And it felt really comfortable and lightweight on my skin throughout the day. You don't feel like you're wearing a ton of makeup with this. I also feel like this one does a great job of blurring pores. All in all, I think price point, uh, how this performed, color selection, everything across the board. I think this was definitely my favorite of the group of new foundations and I would recommend this to pretty much any skin type. I could see this working for a lot of people. So that is going to wrap up today's video of best and worst new foundations. I hope that this was helpful and I hope I answered a lot of your questions, but obviously if there are any that I forgot or any recommendations you have, let me know in the comments section. Thank you guys for taking time out of your day to watch this video. If you're new, please feel free to subscribe to continue to get a lot of these types of videos from me and I will talk to you all very soon. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.